Okay, uh, so you don't get bored watching me write down uh, lots and lots of numbers and figures. I've, I've, I've uh, stopped the camera and set this up so I can talk through this experiment. Okay, so we want to test our uh, scalar property uh, in temporal generalization. So we're going to run two experiments, two, uh, two temporal generalization experiments, one where we have a 400 millisecond standard and one where we have an 800 millisecond standard. Okay? So you can see here what I've written down is the comparison durations that we're going to give them in the experiment. Okay? So there's our 400 millisecond standard, here's our 300, here's our 200, here's our 100, so these ones shorter than the standard, these ones longer than the standard. Same over here for the um, 800 millisecond experiment, we've got all of the comparison durations we're going to use. Okay, next to these, I've written the data that we've actually got from the experiment. Okay, so if we ran this experiment, then this is the kind of data we would get. Okay, so you can see that when, um, so this is how often they're saying yes. Okay, um, and so you can see that when, the, when they're actually presented with the standard, then that's when they say yes most often. When it's much shorter than the standard, they hardly say yes. When it's much longer than the standard, they hardly say yes. And it's the same situation over here for the 800 millisecond standard. Okay. Now down here, I have plotted. Um, I've plotted these data points. Okay. So the ones in black are for the 400 millisecond standard. The ones in green are for the 800 millisecond standard. Now before before I put the data points, the uh, graphs on, just notice what's going on with the x-axis here. On the x-axis, we have the absolute duration of the comparison, okay, so all of these numbers here, so 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, so on, all the way up to 1400 over here, okay. Now, if I draw in the data, if I can find my black pen, okay, so here's the data for the 400 millisecond standard experiment, and you can see it looks something like this, okay, and if I draw the same in for the 800 millisecond standard, you can see something is something like this. Now, by looking at the data and what we know about the gradients, we, we you'll be able to tell now that they're obviously more sensitive in this condition than they are in this condition. They're less variable in this condition than they are in this condition. Okay? So we've doubled the duration of the standard, we've doubled the durations we're using, and we seem to have increased the variability. But remember, for the scalar property, we need to prove that um, that variability has increased proportionally. Okay, so we've doubled the duration. Now I want to test whether I've actually doubled the variability. Okay, so in order to do that, what I want to do is instead of plotting it on an absolute scale, I want to plot it on a relative scale. Okay, so this time, instead of plotting it against um, the actual duration of the comparison, I want to plot it as um, against the, uh, how much of a proportion of the standard the comparison was. Okay? So let, let me go through this one and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Okay? So the 100 millisecond standard uh, comparison is um, a quarter of the duration of um, the standard duration. Okay? So as a proportion it's 0.4. The 200 one is obviously half, so 0.5. 300 one is a quarter. 3 quarters, sorry, 0.75, and so on and so forth, okay? Okay, so I'm replacing these numbers with this set of numbers, and the same over here. And you can see that these numbers are going to be exactly the same, okay? The 200 millisecond standard is obviously a quarter of the 800 millisecond standard. So it's going to be, it's going to be the same numbers as we have over, over here. So by converting these into these, I can now plot these two graphs on the same proportional scale. I can plot them on the same scale. I'm taking account of the fact that I've used um, different actual um, comparison durations. Okay? Now you can see, hopefully you can see, that if I, if I do this, that, um, that I'm going to be plotting both of these graphs on the same scale. Okay? Now if I do that, and we have doubled this, this, this variability is actually doubled, then when I plot them on the same proportional scale, these two graphs should, should, should line up with each other, they should cover each other up, they should superimpose. And that is the property of superimposition. Okay? So I'm going to um, stop the camera 
and uh, replot this data, but now putting these numbers on the x-axis, and you'll see what happens to the graphs.